Okay then, so now we know all the basics, pages, routes, layouts, links, images, and styles. Next, I wanna move on to fetching data that we can then show on the tickets page, which is currently completely empty. So to begin with, we need somewhere to fetch the data from. Now, that could be any API endpoint or even a database directly, because remember, any component that we make inside the app directory is a server component by default. So we can put server logic inside this component if we wanted to and not have to worry about that code ever running in the browser. For the sake of this lesson though, I'll just be using a local JSON file as some dummy data and then I'll use the JSON server package to wrap that in API endpoints so that we can interact with it as if it was a real API. For production, you wouldn't do this obviously. You'd either use a real API or your own database or something else. But the methodology and the way we're gonna fetch the data would be pretty much exactly the same. So it's okay for this sample project right now. All right then. So I've already created an underscore data folder right here in the root of the application. And inside that is a JSON object with a property called tickets which is an array of objects where each object represents a single ticket. And each ticket has an ID property. It has a title property, a body property, and also a user email property as well. And we have three of those in total. And by the way, if you wanna grab this JSON, you can do from the course repo, the course files, the link to that is gonna be down below the video. You just need to select the lesson six branch from the dropdown, and then you can copy it. So. That's our data. Now we need to run JSON server and tell it to watch this file. So in order to do this, you need to have JSON server installed globally on your computer. And to do that, you can open up any terminal and then type npm install JSON hyphen server and then a space and then hyphen G to install it globally on your computer. Once that's installed, you can use it by typing JSON hyphen server, then a space, then double dash watch, and then double dash port, 4000 and then we want the path to the JSON file that we want to watch which is dot forward slash then in our case underscore data and then it's forward slash the name of the file name which is db.json and when you press enter that's going to spin up a server and create endpoints for us to interact with this ticket resource and you should see that endpoint in the terminal. And if you view that endpoint in the browser localhost port 4000 forward slash tickets now we can see that our array of data that we get back, awesome. So that works. Now we wanna fetch this from our tickets component. So then we could make a fetch request directly from the page component, which is a server component, remember? And the way we do that is just by using the standard fetch API, which is made available to us. However, just for the sake of keeping things tidy, modular and reusable, I wanna create a new component inside this tickets directory called ticket list. And it's inside this component that I wanna fetch the tickets data and output it inside the template. And remember all components inside the app folder are server components by default, including this one. It's not just page components, it's any component we make. So the way we'd fetch the data inside here is just the same as the way we'd fetch it from inside the page component. Now, when we're using server components, we can declare them as async functions and use the fetch API directly inside them, which is awesome. So I could put the async keyword right in front of this component to make it an async one. And then down inside the component, I could use the fetch API to go out and fetch the data. However, what I like to do instead is make another function outside the component, which is responsible for fetching the data. So that all the fetch logic is kept outside the component itself to keep things a little bit cleaner. So let's do that. Let's make another async function up here and let's call this something like get tickets. And it's inside this function that we wanna go out and fetch them. So let's do that then. Let's say const response is equal to await fetch, and then we wanna paste in the endpoint, which is localhost port 4000 forward slash tickets, which remember is coming from JSON server. This is the endpoint it gave us for the tickets resource. Now we can grab the data from that response by saying response.json, and that returns a promise because it's asynchronous. And in fact, we're gonna return this from the function. So now when we call it down here, I could say const tickets, which is the tickets data, the tickets array is equal to get tickets. But because this right here returns a promise, I need to await the return for that. So I can say ticket is equal to await get tickets. And remember we can use await because we can have asynchronous components right here. All right, so now we have that tickets data. Let's work on the template. So we'll do a fragment first of all, which is just an empty tag basically. 
And then inside here, we want to do something dynamic. We want to map through the tickets and return a bit of template for each one. So we need curly braces and then say tickets.map. We fire a function for each ticket and we return a bit of template for each ticket inside parentheses. Now, each time we fire a function for a ticket, we get access to that ticket. And then down here, we need to return some kind of element to wrap the rest of the template. So we'll do a div tag and that parent element must have a key prop when we map out through some data in React. So we'll say key is equal to ticket dot ID because we do have an ID property. We have ID, title, body, priority, and use email. All right, so we also wanna give this a class name or card. And we already made that class, remember, in one of the previous lessons. And then also we'll give it some extra margin in the Y direction by using a Tailwind class, MY5. Now inside this div, I want to output the title, the body and the priority. So first of all, the title inside an H3, we'll say tickets.title. And then below that, we'll output some of the body, but not all of the body. So I'm gonna say tickets.body and then use the slice method to slice that string from position zero to position 200. So essentially the first 200 characters and then after that, we'll do dot, dot, dot to signify there is more. And then after that, we'll do a div. Now this is gonna have a class name equal to pill. In fact, this needs to be dynamic. So what I'm gonna do is curly braces and then a back tick string. So we can output a variable and it's gonna have a class of pill, but also I want it to have a class of whatever the priority is. So that could be low, it could be medium, it could be high. Now remember in our CSS, we had those classes down here somewhere. So pill.medium, pill.high and p.low and it just colorizes them differently. So I wanna output the ticket priority property inside a variable. So dollar sign curly braces and then say ticket.priority like so. And that's gonna be low, medium or high. All right, so inside here we can output the ticket priority. So ticket.priority and after that I will do priority. So it will be either low priority, high priority or medium priority, okay? And I think that's pretty much it. What I am gonna do also is check to see if we don't have any tickets. So if tickets.length is equal to zero, then I wanna output something. So we'll do double ampersand and then parentheses. So if this evaluates to true, then this side runs and therefore outputs some template. So we'll do a paragraph tag inside here and that will have a class name equal to text hyphen center. And then we'll just say there are no open tickets. Yay. All right then, so now we're fetching the data. We're returning the data. We're using that function to get the tickets data. And then we're mapping through the tickets inside this component and then we'll be able to view them in a browser. Now, before we try this in a browser, we need to put this component ticket list inside the tickets page. So let's do that underneath tickets. In fact, what I'm gonna do first of all is just alter the template of this a little bit. I'm gonna create a nav because we'll use a nav at the top of this page later on. Inside that a div, and then we'll do our H2, which says tickets. And then below that, I'm gonna do a little paragraph tag with a small tag inside that. And then we'll just say currently open tickets, like a little subtitle. Okay, so now beneath the navigation, we want to nest that ticket list. So let's say ticket list like so. It's gonna auto import it for us up here. Cool. So now this should all work. All right, so I'm on the dashboard, but if I go to view the tickets, then we should see a list of all the tickets, which we do awesome. So we can see the title for each one. We can see a bit of the body, but just a bit of the body, not all of it and also the priority. And this is all looking pretty nice because we already added all those styles in in a previous lesson. But now we know that this is where we're fetching the data and we're showing that in a browser, awesome. Now remember, all of this fetch logic is running on the server because this is a server component by default. So by the time the page reaches the browser, the data has already been fetched and output into the template. Also by default, Next.js 13 does two things for us when it comes to fetching data. First of all, it dedupes any fetches that we make to the same resource. 
And that means that if we fetch this ticket data somewhere else in the application, as well as here, Next will only actually fetch the data once, and then it will reuse the data it gets back wherever else we call that fetch. Secondly, it caches the response of any fetches that we make, so that if we navigate away from the page and then come back sometime later, it uses the cached version of the data it already fetched. And it does that indefinitely, which is great for site speed, great for user experience because the page is going to load instantly. And a lot of the time, that's probably the behavior that you want for your website, where maybe your data responses don't change over time much. But there are times when you probably don't want to aggressively cache your fetches indefinitely. For example, like our application, where the data might change very, very frequently as users add more tickets, or maybe for a new site where articles might get added several times a day. So in those cases, you can ask Next.js to revalidate the cache data, which basically means refetch it and rebuild the page that uses that data. And we can ask for it to do this after a set amount of time. For example, where content might change every few minutes, you could ask it to revalidate every 60 seconds or less. If the content only changes every other day, you might ask it to revalidate the data about every 24 hours or something. Now, the way we do this is by adding a second argument to the fetch function, which is an object. And then one of the properties on that object is going to be called next, which should also be an object. And inside that object, we have a revalidate property. And we set that equal to the amount of time that next should wait since the last page visit before revalidating the data again. And if another request for that page comes in, then it will show that revalidated data, that refetch data, okay? So for example, I could set this to be 30, and that would mean if I visit the page for the first ever time, Next would fetch the data from scratch, right? Then if I visit the page within 30 seconds again, it will serve the data up from cache. But if I visit the page again after that 30 seconds, then Next.js is gonna attempt to refetch the data again in the background. However, even then, I'm still going to get served the previously cached data because it still has that available when I made the request. But the next time I visit, I will see the updated data. So let's give this a whirl and see if it works. All right, so I've got open the website on the right and the code on the left. And what I want to do is, first of all, just refresh this page to make a new request to the page. So now the 30 seconds starts. Now what I'm going to do is quickly delete this ID2 one right here. So let me cut that and then save it. Now, what I'm going to do now is refresh again over here. Now, we're within the 30 seconds, so nothing's going to happen. It's all still the same. And it's not even going to trigger another refetch in the background because since the initial fetch, it's not been more than 30 seconds until my next one. Does that make sense? So what I'm going to do is just wait for about an extra 10 seconds now. All right, and then I'm gonna refresh the page again, but nothing should change this time. If I refresh, we should see nothing has changed, even though we've gone over the 30 seconds. And that's because we have gone over the 30 seconds, so in the background when we made that next request, Next will try to fetch the new data, but because it already had the previous data in cache, it served it to us. But now in the background, it's revalidated this. So the next request we make now, is gonna show the updated data where this one shouldn't be here. So let's cross our fingers and refresh again. And hopefully we can see, yep, now we just get two of them. Awesome. So then that's how we can fetch data from a server component and also revalidate the cache data based on a certain time frame. Now, actually for the project that we're making, I don't want Next.js to ever serve up data from cache because I feel like on a help desk, tickets could be constantly being added and updated maybe every minute or so and some of them could be really urgent so to opt out of the data being cached at all you can set this value to be zero and when this is zero the data will never be cached and it will always be fresh it does however mean that it might be slightly slower because refetching data every time is obviously not as quick as serving data from cache but let's keep this at zero for now and try this again so I've got the project open again on the right and you can see if we refresh, we still have just the two tickets. And now what I'm gonna do is go back to db.json, undo that cut that I did to put in this ticket again. 
And then because we have revalidate set to none, if we refresh straight away, it's going to retry to fetch the data because it's not serving from cache anymore. And we can see we get three tickets again. Awesome.